All right, let's get right into it. Your assigned problems may or may not have different randomized values. For best results, attempt the assignment on your own before watching these solutions. Students are encouraged to frequently pause the video to work out steps on their own before proceeding with the solutions. And here is the list of topics to be covered in this video. In our first problem, we're supposed to give an exact solution for x. Well, it's just a right triangle, so we can use the Pythagorean theorem. So x squared plus 11 squared is 18 squared. Squaring 11 and 18 and taking the difference, we have x squared is 203. So x is the positive square root of 203. That's all there is to it. Problem two, what is the distance between the points 14, 16 and negative one, negative 20? So I've plotted them here. 14, 16 is marked in red in the upper right and negative one, negative 20 in blue in the lower left. We'll just use the distance formula. So we need to compute delta x, the difference in the x coordinates, x2 minus x1, 14 minus negative one, and delta y, the difference in the two y coordinates, 16 minus negative 20. The distance between them is now the hypotenuse of a right triangle because the Pythagorean theorem is the same thing as the distance formula. So d squared is delta x squared plus delta y squared, which is 15 squared plus 36 squared. So d squared is 1,521, so d must be the square root of 1,521, which happens to be exactly 39. Problem three, let's write the equation of the circle centered at negative five comma two, which has radius 19. So a circle geometrically is defined as all points a given distance, which we call the radius, from a given center. So we are given the radius and the center. The center is negative five two, the radius is 19. So the circle is given by all points x, y, whose distance to negative five two is equal to 19. So from the distance formula, AKA the Pythagorean theorem, the distance from x, y to negative five two being equal to 19 works out to be x plus five squared plus y minus two squared equals 19 squared. There's the equation of the circle centered at negative five two with radius 19. In general, by the way, a circle of radius r centered at a given point is given by x minus x naught squared plus y minus y naught squared equals r squared. And it's just because that's the definition of a circle is all x, y, so that the distance to the center x naught y naught is equal to r. In problem four, we're asked to write the equation of a circle centered at a given point 1, 8, but we don't know the radius. What we know, however, is that it passes through the point negative 20, negative 15. So the equation of a circle with center x naught y naught and radius r would be x minus x naught squared plus y minus y naught squared equals r squared. We know the center, it's 1 comma 8. But what's the radius? Now we do know one point on the circle, so the distance from that point to the center must be equal to r. So r squared must be the distance from 1 comma 8 to negative 20, negative 15. Working this out, we get r squared is 21 squared plus 23 squared, or x minus x naught squared plus y minus y naught squared is r squared, since we've computed r squared to be 970, and we know that x naught equals 1 and y naught equals 8, we have x minus 1 squared plus y minus 8 squared is equal to 970. Problem five, convert the angle four pi over three from radians to degrees. So a full circle has 360 degrees, but it also has two pi radians. So to convert from radians to degrees, we're looking for some sort of conversion factor, x degrees per radian. But observe that two pi being a full circle, if you multiply two pi by x degrees per radian, you should get the full circle, 360 degrees. Solving this for x degrees per radian, we get 180 degrees per pi radians. So if you want to convert from radians to degrees, you will multiply by 180 over pi. Note that to convert from degrees to radians, you'll multiply by pi over 180, the reciprocal. So we had four pi over three radians, multiply by 180 degrees per pi radians and get exactly 240 degrees. Problem six, convert five pi over six radians into degrees. Well, we know we just need to multiply by 180 over pi and this works out to be 150 degrees. Problem seven, let's convert a bunch of angles from degrees into radians. So first 300 degrees. To convert from degrees to radians, multiply by pi over 180, and this simplifies to five pi over three radians. 40 degrees, when you multiply by pi over 180, simplifies to two pi over nine radians. 20 degrees, when you multiply by pi over 180, simplifies to pi over nine radians. 50 degrees, again, all we have to do, multiply by pi over 180 and get five pi over 18 radians. 
and negative 240 degrees, just because there's a negative doesn't mean anything changes, multiply by pi over 180, get negative 4 pi over 3 radians. Problem 8, find the angle between 0 and 360 degrees that is coterminal with the given angle. First, 614 degrees. Well, we subtract 360 degrees because we were bigger than 360 degrees and we get 254 degrees. There it is. Negative 218 in contrast, since it's negative, we're going to add 360 degrees and we get 42 degrees. Negative 2,337 degrees. Well, it's negative, so add 360, but negative 1,977 is still negative, so add 360, still negative, add 360, still negative, still negative, still negative, still negative, and aha, here we have it. Having added 360 several times, we are coterminal with 183 degrees. 6,324 degrees, well, we could start subtracting 360 over and over again, but I know I'm going to be able to subtract 3,600 degrees, more than that in fact, but let's just take away 10 of them. So now we're at 2,724 degrees. If we take away 7 more, you'll be down to 204 degrees, and you cannot take away 360 degrees from that without being negative, so 204 degrees is coterminal with 6,324 degrees. Problem 9, find angles coterminal to given angles, but now we're measuring in radians. The idea is the same. We're going to add or subtract a full circle, and a full circle in radians is 2 pi. So what about 23 pi over 10? Well, if you take away 2 pi, you are taking away 20 pi over 10. The result will be 3 pi over 10, which is still positive, and I definitely cannot take away 2 pi again, so it is coterminal with 3 pi over 10. What about negative pi over 6? Since this is a negative angle, we will add a full rotation. We will add 2 pi. The result is 11 pi over 6. Now that that's positive, we're done. 17 pi over 13 is already in between 0 and 2 pi. It is coterminal with itself. And there we are. Problem 10. Let's write an expression that describes all angles coterminal with 186 degrees. So 186 degrees will be coterminal with any angle that differs from it by 360 degrees, or 720 being 360 twice, or 1080 being 360 thrice, etc. In other words, any angle that differs by an integer multiple of 360 degrees. So we're looking for angles x so that the difference between x degrees and 186 degrees is 360 degrees times any integer. In other words, x should be 186 degrees plus 360 degrees times k, where k is any integer, and observe, k might be negative. That's fine. Problem 11 is slightly tedious. The indicated angles are all standard reference angles. We want to identify them all in radians exactly as multiples of pi. So there's a lot of things marked up here. We're going to have to go through them one by one. Now in the first quadrant, we just kind of have to memorize what is considered a standard reference angle, and in degrees, most people memorize them first as 30, 45, and 60 degrees. Converting those to radians, you get pi over 6, pi over 4, and pi over 3. So you can also add 90 degrees, which in radians is pi over 2, successively to these reference angles to just end up in other quadrants, rotating by one quadrant, one quarter of the circle, or 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians, one by one to fill this in. So we start at A, which is pointing straight along the axis, that's an angle of 0. We've already remarked that in the first quadrant our reference angles are pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3. Angle E is pointing straight up, that's 90 degrees or pi over 2. Now we're just adding pi over 2 to things we've already found. So pi over 6 plus pi over 2 is 2 pi over 3. Pi over 4 plus pi over 2 is 3 pi over 4. Pi over 3 plus pi over 2 is 5 pi over 6 pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is pi, and we're just going one by one from angles we've already found and adding pi over 2 to them and simplifying the result. It takes a while to work through, but here we have it. These are our standard reference angles. Really just remember what they are in the first quadrant, 0, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, and then you can add pi over 2 to all of those, and then add pi over 2 to all of those, and then add pi over 2 to all of those to fill all this in. Problem 12, consider the angle 105 pi over 11. Done. The angle between 0 and 2 pi, which is coterminal, is what? So all we end up doing is subtracting 2 pi as many times as we can, and that happens to be 4 times while remaining positive, and the result will be 17 pi over 11. What quadrant is this in? 
So what we have to do is identify what half pi this is in between. Now 17 pi over 11 is definitely bigger than pi. That would be 11 pi over 11. It's in fact bigger than 3 pi over 2, but it is not quite all the way to 2 pi. That puts it in quadrant 4, in between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. The reference angle is what? Now the reference angle is a term for the smallest positive acute angle formed by this angle and the horizontal axis. So if you draw this angle and you draw the horizontal axis, the x-axis, and ask what's the angle between them measured as an acute angle, that's what the reference angle is. So here is a picture of our quadrant 4 angle. However, if I want to measure an acute angle with the x-axis, it's the little blue angle marked instead, but that would just be the missing piece to complete all the way to 2 pi. So 17 pi over 11, our angle, plus the angle we're actually interested in, which I'm calling x, would give us a complete 2 pi, a complete rotation. So x plus 17 pi over 11 is 2 pi, solved for x, 5 pi over 11. There's the reference angle. In problem 13, we want to determine which quadrant is described by given information. Various combinations of whether sine and cosine are positive and negative. So here are our quadrants. Just remember, starting in the upper right, that's quadrant 1, and then you proceed counterclockwise, quadrants 2, 3, and 4, respectively. Now the sine of an angle is a y-coordinate, and the cosine is an x-coordinate. So sine being negative and cosine being negative mean both x and y are negative. That is quadrant 3. Simply looking at the coordinate axes, where are x and y both negative? Quadrant 3. However, where is y positive and x negative? That's quadrant 2. Where is y positive and x positive? That's quadrant 1. And where is y negative and x positive? That's quadrant 4. Really all this problem is asking you to do is start to draw a relationship between sines and cosines and y values and x values respectively. Problem 14. Suppose the point P is on the unit circle, the y coordinate is negative 4 sevenths, and P is in quadrant 3. What is the x-coordinate of p? Now the unit circle satisfies x squared plus y squared equals 1. We were given y to be negative 4 sevenths, which squares to 16 over 49, preemptively giving a common denominator on that other term of 1 being 49 over 49. Subtract 16 over 49 from both sides and get that x squared must be 33 over 49, meaning x is plus or minus root 33 over 7. But we were also told we are in quadrant 3. And as we determined in the previous problem, in quadrant 3, x is negative. So we are taking the negative square root of 33 over 7. In problem 15, suppose the sine of theta is 1 third and theta is in the third quadrant. Let's find the cosine of theta. So the y coordinate is 1 third. We are on the unit circle. And we want to find the x coordinate. We know the sine, the y coordinate. We want to find the cosine, the x coordinate. So x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. We were given y is equal to a third. Squaring, subtracting, we end up with x is plus or minus root 8 over 9. In other words, plus or minus 2 root 2 over 3. But we are in the third quadrant. The x coordinate, aka the cosine of theta, will be negative. So we let the cosine of theta, or x, be negative 2 root 2 over 3. And in problem 16, if the cosine of theta is negative 3 fourths and theta is in the second quadrant, what is the sine of theta? As we've been doing, x is the cosine of theta, y is the sine of theta, and the unit circle is given by x squared plus y squared equals 1. So given x equals negative 3 fourths, we plug that in, we square that, we subtract it to the other side, and we solve that y, in other words the sine of theta, is plus or minus root 7 over 4. But we were told we are in the second quadrant, and in the second quadrant, y coordinates are positive, so y, aka the sine of theta, is root 7 over 4. In problem 17, suppose you have the angle 150 degrees. Without using a calculator, what is the reference angle? In other words, what acute angle does it make with the x-axis? So here's a circle with the x-axis. 90 degrees would be straight up, another 60 degrees, that makes 150, but we're looking for an acute angle with the x-axis, so it's the missing 30 degrees here. So the reference angle is 30 degrees. In what quadrant are we? Well, looking at where we're pointing, we have positive y values and negative x values, that's quadrant 2. What's the value of the sine of 150 degrees? So it has the same y value as the reference angle, because we do have positive y values in quadrant 2. 
So the sine of 150 degrees would be exactly the same as the sine of its reference angle, the sine of 30 degrees, which just looking up in a chart is one half. But what would the cosine be? Now in quadrant two, x values are negative. So it will have the opposite x value as the reference angle. So the cosine of 150 degrees will be negative cosine of 30 degrees, which again referring to a known chart is going to be minus root three over two. In problem 18, suppose theta is five pi over six. What is the sine of theta? So here's our unit circle with our x axis. Here's our angle of five pi over six. We know that pi is halfway around the circle. That would be straight left. So this is pretty close. In fact, it's only off by one pi over six. Pi over six is therefore our reference angle. So the angle will have the same sign because we are in quadrant two. The sine of five pi over six will be the same as the sine of pi over six. That's a half, just referring to a chart. What about the cosine? We're in quadrant two, cosines are negative. So it will be the opposite of cosine of pi over six. So negative root three over two. In problem 19, suppose theta is minus 3 pi over 4. What is the sine of theta? Again, here's our standard circle with our x-axis. Minus pi over 2 would be minus 90 degrees. That's pointing straight down. So how much further do we have to go? Another pi over 4, so halfway through the next quadrant. So here is our angle of minus 3 pi over 4. The reference angle would be this missing bit of pi over 4. Since we're in quadrant three, we have negative y values. So compared to the reference angle, the sine of minus three pi over four will be the opposite of the sine of pi over four, so minus root two over two. What about the cosine? We are in quadrant three, so x values are also negative. So the cosine of minus three pi over four will be negative the cosine of the reference angle, which looking up is root two over two. So the cosine of minus three pi over four is negative root two over two. Problem 20, find the coordinates of a point on a circle that has radius 25 and corresponds to an angle of 285 degrees. Now in the unit circle, if you are looking for a point corresponding to an angle, that's just the cosine of the angle comma the sine of the angle. In a circle of radius 25, everything has been made 25 times bigger. So this has coordinates 25 cosine 285 degrees comma 25 sine 285 degrees. As it happens, this point can exactly be given by the following, 25 times the quantity root three minus one over two root two, comma, negative 25 times the quantity root three plus one over two root two. But the reference angle would be 75 degrees and that's not one of our standard reference angles. So we don't actually have the tools yet to find these exact values. I've merely included them as a point of interest. Probably the correct answer that an instructor is looking for is what we put in the fourth line, 25 cosine 285 degrees, 25 sine 285 degrees. If you needed to, you could punch this into a calculator to get a decimal approximation, but that's not what the wording of the problem indicated.